If you've been around tennis for any length of time, then you know you're supposed to step in to your shots, right? Well, the reality of world-class tennis might actually really surprise you. It's very different from what people assume is happening. And in this video, I'm going to break down a tiebreaker between Stefano Sissipas and Rafael Nadal played at this year's Australian Open and do a little analysis. How many times did they actually move forward through a shot versus moving sideways or moving backwards? In this tiebreaker, they played 11 points and combined they hit 58 shots, not counting serves. Once the point got started, they together hit 58 shots. So if you're brave, leave your guess down below in the comments but before seeing the answer, which I'm going to give you in just a minute. How many times do you think they actually moved forwards and stepped into their shots compared to moving sideways or moving backwards? Let's go ahead and dive in a little bit deeper and see some examples of all three of those. Here's several examples taken from that tiebreaker of both players moving forwards. This means they're on offense. It means they're attacking. They're, they're able to actively transition and transfer their body weight forwards. Uh, let's, let's play through a couple of these. I, I put the, the red arrow in there so you know uh, who to watch. And this is just going to be individual shots. So, so watch both players. Those first three, we'll, we'll go through them more slowly in a second. Those first three were on the baseline, and there's a couple net shots that I threw in there as well. So let, let's look at this one. Watch Nadal here. And basically what I did for each of these shots was I took the split step position of either player, and I just simply checked out, okay, when they made contact with the ball, have they moved forwards, have they only moved sideways, or did they actually have to move back? And so on this particular example, Nadal takes his split step right here, and by the time he makes contact, he's up close to the baseline. So he's moved forwards, he's stepped in. You'll see different stances, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a, a square stance where you're stepping forwards at a right angle, but his body weight did transition and, and move forwards. And this actual, actually particular uh, example, he's very close to a, a square stance. He actually literally is stepping forwards and into this shot. Uh, so that's that example. Let me show you a couple more here real quick. Here's another one of Nadal. Interesting example here where he actually initially backs up and then moves back forwards again. And this is from a mostly open, almost completely open stance, but he's still transitioning forwards as he hits. And then here's one of Sissipas on a return of serve. Tough shot, but look where his split step finishes and look where he actually hits. And so he's transitioned his body weight forwards in order to hit this shot. So these are all examples of, of both players making an effort with their body weight to tra transition and transfer forwards, which provides more energy, which provides more force through the shot, and helps create a little bit more offense. Now let's check out some examples of both players moving sideways. That means when they make their split step and hit, they haven't transitioned their body at all, forwards or backwards, they're just moving laterally to the baseline. So they're staying the same distance away from the baseline as they hit all the way through the shot. So uh, Red Arrow is just pointing out who to, to watch here. So again, look at the, the split step, Sissipas landing in his split step right here. And all of his movement goes sideways as he hits. And so this is lateral movement. And this is a neutral situation. It means that Stefanos doesn't have the ability to move forwards and attack, but he's also not getting pushed back by an offensive Nadal. So they're on even footing, they're on an even playing field, as it were. Neither player has a, a clear advantage in the points, and that's why he's, he's moving sideways or laterally. Let's just look at uh, one or two more here. Uh, so here's another one from Sissipas moving along the baseline before he hits. No forward movement, no backward movement. And we'll look at one of uh, Nadal here. Here's the split step. Here's the, the movement, staying the same distance away from the baseline. What's interesting is he's clearly he's defensive here. He's struggling just to get this back, but he's standing his ground. He's, he's not getting pushed back or, or trailing away from the baseline, which in tennis is super, super valuable. And here's one more of Nadal. Check out his split step position, and he's pushing off and moving lateral to the, the baseline. And so as he hits this, he's in a completely open stance, and all his momentum is traveling lateral to the baseline. Now let's look at some examples of both players moving back 
as they're hitting. And so keep an eye on where the, the red arrow is and I'll go ahead and play through several of these and watch how the momentum of whoever the, the red arrow side of the court is on is traveling away from the net. And so there's increasing distance between the player and the baseline as they hit each of these shots. And so why would they do this? Well, they're doing this because they're being forced to by their opponent. Their, their opponent is hitting a strong enough shot, an offensive enough of a shot, that they have no choice but to, for, to buy themselves a little bit of time, a little bit of space, so that they can stay in the point and give themselves a fighting chance to be able to stay in the rally. So let's look at a couple of these examples. Nadal's uh, split step taking place right here. And by the time he hits, look at how he's backing up to buy himself some more space. The ball actually would have probably landed behind him had he just stayed where he was. Here's an example of uh, Sissipas. Look at where he, he makes his split step. And now watch his uh, trailing movement here away from the baseline. And so he's moving further and further and further away from the baseline. Uh, sorry, you can't really see that the whole time that he's moving to the ball. Why is he doing this? If he moved straight across the, uh, the baseline, instead of moving back, the ball probably would have passed him up by the, the time he got there. The ball is cutting through the court too fast for him to take a, a direct route and certainly can't you know, run forwards because by the time he gets there, the ball is already long gone. So he's going back in order to give himself more space and to give himself more time to hopefully retrieve the ball in a really tough defensive situation like this. Let's just look at one or, or two more. Here's uh, Sissipas again. Uh, this is an interesting one-two combo here where he's not being put in a super clear defensive position, but he still feels the need here to buy a little bit of space and time to deal with Nadal's shot. And so he's backing up solid two, three feet to hit this shot. And then the next ball, again, not a very clear like defensive uh, situation here, but watch how he backs up again to give himself even additional space and time. And it's because of the depth that Nadal is hitting here. This is a difficult shot just because of where it's landing. And obviously the topspin that Nadal creates causes a huge bounce. And so Sissipas feels the need to back up and give himself a little bit more space and time to deal with that. So what you're seeing here from these players is an awareness of their phase of play, offense, neutral, and defense, and then there's a corresponding direction of movement. Would it be nice if you could just make the decision to step forwards on every single shot? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. That would, that would help us be more offensive more of the time. Is it realistic or even possible to do that? No. It's not possible, and it's not realistic, and so you have to be situationally aware. So let's actually look at the, the numbers now. Again, 58 shots, let's see how they broke down. So 11 points, 58 shots, 27 of those 58 shots, or 47%, almost half of them, these two players were moving laterally, back and forth. Uh, 17, or 29%, they were moving forwards into the shot, and 14 out of the 58, or 24%, they were being forced to move back to get by themselves a little bit more time. So stepping forward or stepping in, whatever you want to call it, moving through the shot and moving backwards was almost the same. These two like elite world-class, incredible ball strikers, like you know, some of the best tennis players ever are moving backwards almost as much as they're, they're moving forwards. And the reason why there's so many sideways shots being hit is because this was a really evenly uh, contested match. Both Nadal and Sissi Pass were, were playing fantastic throughout the match. And, and so because it's evenly matched, there's a lot of neutral rallies. Uh, neutral meaning neither player really has a clear upper hand in, in the point. And so naturally, there's going to be more sideways shots. If one player was like super dominant and the other person was just getting crushed, then the dominant player would be stepping in a lot and the person getting crushed would be stepping back a lot. So please don't fall for the idea that you should always be stepping in or that you should even always try to be stepping forwards. When you have the option, when you have the choice, should you transition forwards? Yes, absolutely. Is the option or the choice always there? No, definitely not. So I just wanted to do a quick uh, numbers analysis here. We're not gonna get into the actual you know, nuts and bolts of the actual footwork patterns. But if you'd like step-by-step -step instruction on how to execute all the different footwork patterns you need in tennis, 
then make sure to go to EssentialTennisAcademy.com and get free access to the uh, Footwork Pattern Success section of Essential Tennis Academy. You can get full access to the entire members area for free. Just go to EssentialTennisAcademy.com right now. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, do me a favor and click the like button, and I'll catch you in the next video.